Welcome back. In this video, I will discuss inference rules in artificial intelligence with the help of simple examples. The first inference rule is modus ponens or implication elimination rule. We will take a simple example to understand the modus ponens rule here. Let's assume that we have been given the set of statements. The first statement is if it is raining, then Rahul is inside. The second statement is, it is raining. Now, we will try to convert these compound statements into simple primitive statements. If you look at the first one, it has uh, two primitive statements. That is, it is raining. That is the first one. Second one is, uh, Rahul is inside. And if you look at the second one, again, it is raining. So, we have already considered it. So, we have two primitive statements in the given set of statements here. That is, alpha is, it is raining. And beta is, Rahul is inside. Now, we will try to convert these statements in the form of uh, propositional logic. If it is raining, then Rahul is inside. Can be written something like this. Alpha implies beta and it is raining can be written just alpha here. Now, if you look at this one, uh, when it comes to propositional logic and whenever we have been given some set of uh, predicates here, each of those predicates will be considered as true here. Now, if you look at these statements carefully, if it is raining, then Rahul is inside. It is already raining here. So, what is the meaning of this one? Rahul is inside. So, the result of uh, these two uh, statements is nothing but uh, the beta. That's the reason I have written the conclusion is beta in this case. So, in modus opponents rule, whenever we got uh, such kind of statements, that is alpha implies beta and alpha, the result will be beta always in this case. So, that is what is known as modus opponents rule in this case. Coming back to the second one, that is known as uh, modus uh, tollens rule. Again, we will take an example. Uh, if it is raining, then Rahul is inside. That is the first uh, predicate given to us. The second statement in this case is uh, Rahul is not inside. Now, we will try to convert these things into primitive statements. Again, we have uh, two primitive statements in this case. That is, uh, it is raining. That is, alpha is, it is raining. Rahul is inside. That is the second one. That is, beta is equal to Rahul is inside here. Now, Rahul is not inside, that is nothing but negation of uh, beta here. So, if you convert these things into proportional logic, we will get alpha implies beta. For the second one, we will get negation of beta here. So, what it indicates in this case is, if it is raining, then Rahul is inside. The Rahul is not inside, the meaning is what? It is not raining here. So, the conclusion will be in this case, negation of alpha here. So, whenever we get alpha implies beta and negation of beta, that is the second one, the negation of first one will be the answer here. That is negation of alpha in this case. So, this is known as a modus tollens rule in this case. Coming back to the next one that is known as and elimination. Again, we will take an example. Uh, let's assume that we have been given the statement something like this. Sachin and Saurav are friends of Rahul. Now, how to convert these things into a primitive statement? Uh, Sachin is a friend of Rahul. And second one is Saurav is a friend of Rahul in this case. So, I have taken alpha as Sachin is a friend of Rahul, beta as Saurav is a friend of Rahul in this case. Now, if you convert this statement into proposition logic, you will get alpha and beta because Sachin and Saurav are friends of Rahul in this case. Now, if you look at here, this statement is true. If this statement is true, the first component of this statement should be true as well as second one should be true here. So, whenever we get and in this case, the meaning of this one is both the premises are true here. So, that's the reason we will can write the conclusion as alpha or the first statement or we can write beta also over here. Based on the requirement, we can eliminate uh, this uh, uh, and and then we can use these uh, individual primitive statements over here. So, this is what is known as uh, and elimination. It can be written in general something like this. Alpha 1 and alpha 2 and last one is and alpha n. We can use any of these things for our uh, uh, proving the given statements that is alpha i over here. Now, we will consider the next one that is known as i and introduction over here. Again, we will take a simple example that is uh, Rahul pass the exam. That is the first one. Sachin pass the exam. These are the two statements given to us. Again, we need to uh, write the primitive statements here. Alpha is Rahul pass the examination. That is the first one. Second one is beta Sachin pass the examination. Now, in this case, uh, we can convert the given set of statements into something like this. The first one is alpha here. Second one is beta in this case. Now, we know that alpha is true. 
and beta is true so the conclusion can be alpha and beta here because alpha and beta both of them are true alpha and beta is also true here so whenever we have two premises like alpha and beta we can introduce and statement over here like alpha and beta in this case so this is what is called as and introduction in this case in general we can write something like this if we have alpha 1 alpha 2 till alpha n we can introduce and something like this alpha 1 and alpha 2 and dot 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 and alpha n in this case the next one is uh, or introduction uh, let's assume that we have been given a statement something like this rahul passed the exam you can write this uh, uh, statement in the form of primitives like this alpha rahul passed the examination this is the statement now uh, only one statement is given to us that's the reason we got alpha here now what is the meaning of this one alpha is true because alpha is true we can write the conclusion something like this alpha or anything here you can write beta gamma or whatever it may be because alpha is true true or anything is true only so that's the reason we can write alpha or beta or alpha or gamma or anything we can write here that is nothing but we have introduced or in our uh, uh, proving the statements here the next one is uh, known as negation elimination also known as double negation here uh, if you have a statement something like this it is not true that rahul did not pass the exam so this is what the statement given to us in this case the primitive statement is what alpha rahul passed the exam that is the primitive statement here now we will try to convert this statement into proportional logic so what is present here is from here to here rahul did not pass the examination that is nothing but what negation of alpha here now what is present outside here it is not true that rahul did not pass the examination the meaning is negation of negation alpha here so that is what the statement in this case now, if you apply the De Morgan's law and if you take this negation inside, this negation and negation get cancelled, what will be the conclusion in this case? Alpha will be the conclusion in this case. So, that is what the meaning of negation elimination or double negation in this case. Coming back to the next one that is known as unit resolution here. Uh, we will take example again to understand this one. Rahul or Sachin passed the exam. That is the statement given to us. The second statement is Sachin did not pass the exam. So, this is the second statement given to us. Again, we will try to identify the uh, primitive statements here. Rahul passed the exam, that is the first one. Sachin passed the exam, that is the second one. Sachin did not pass the examination, that is nothing but uh, negation of beta here. So, these are the two primitive statements we got here. Now, what we can do is we will try to convert these statements into a proportional logic. Rahul or Sachin passed the examination, that is nothing but alpha or beta here. Second one is Sachin did not pass the examination, that is nothing but negation of beta here. Now, as said earlier, uh, these uh, individual uh, statements are true. The meaning is negation of beta is true. If negation of beta is true, beta will be false here. So, if beta is false in this case, the truthness and falsity of this statement depends on what? It depends on alpha here. Alpha should be true. So, that is the reason the conclusion will be in this case alpha over here. So, whenever we get a statement something like this, alpha or beta and negation of beta, the answer will be what? Alpha in this case. So, in this video, I have discussed a few inference rules used in artificial intelligence to prove the given set of uh, statements. I hope the concept is clear. If you like the video, do like and share with your friends. Press the subscribe button for more videos. Press the bell icon for regular updates. Thank you for watching.